guys, welcome back to Empower, and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much again for watching. So I got a lot of emails um, requesting a video on this topic, and I really actually wanted to do my own research as well, and my team was also motivated to do research on this. So we did a lot of work to try to gather the most up-to-date um, information to help you understand this disease process of Ebola. I do have to tell you with the recent events um, of the you know, widespread out of Ebola, as a healthcare professional, it has been a bit scary. And, you know, for a little while, I was questioning whether or not I made the right decision to become a nurse. Ultimately, I just kind of decided that, you know, life in general is risky, and I love what I do so much. And, of course, I hope that um, a cure comes for this virus, and all the people suffering for the virus, especially in Africa, can be helped. Until then, hopefully this video will help you become more aware and more educated of the problem. So, like I said, we did our best to give you the most up-to-date resources and we're trying to make this video easy to understand as well. So, if you do like this video, please do me a huge favor and give the video a thumbs up and also post a comment. I love reading the comments, guys. I know that I don't always have time to reply to every single one of them, but I definitely do my best. So I cannot wait to hear from you guys. And let's get started and let's go over Ebola. Ebola virus disease. Ebola hemorrhagic fever, which is now commonly known as Ebola virus disease, is a deadly disease that was first identified in 1976. It was discovered in a small village near Ebola River in Congo which is why it is called Ebola. Ebola virus disease is a rare disease that is contagious and infects humans and non-human primates, such as chimpanzees, gorillas, and monkeys. Initially, it was confined to Central Africa, but after the latest outbreak, it has been spreading widely across several countries. The origin and cause of the first infection is still unknown. But the research work and obtained evidence indicates that Ebola is an animal-borne virus, which is reserved in fruit bats. It is also concluded that humans and other primates must have come in contact with bat waste or drool, which might have caused the infection. It could have been through the ingestion of contaminated food or touching mouth and eyes after having contact with contaminated surfaces. Causes. The cause of this disease is the Ebola virus that belongs to the family of Filoviridae. Ebola virus has five different species, which are Reston Ebola virus, Zaire Ebola virus, Thai Forest Ebola virus, Sudan Ebola virus, and Bugdabangyo Ebola virus. Reston Ebola virus is said to be responsible for the Ebola disease in apes, while the remaining four viruses are responsible for the Ebola virus disease in humans. Out of these four species, the most deadly one is Zaire Ebola virus, which is the same virus involved in the latest outbreak in West Africa. It first appeared in March 2014. Pathophysiology It is believed that the Ebola virus infects the white blood cells, leaving it unable to fight against infections, which means that it destroys the immune system of the infected person. The virus replicates in an exponential rate, growing rapidly in number and spreading throughout the body. The white blood cells that have been infected, they lose their integrity, causing a chaotic systemic inflammation which results in increased production of clotting proteins by the liver. The proteins creates blood clots in the bloodstream, resulting in clogged blood vessels which reduces or completely obstructs blood flow to the vital organs, due to which organs such as kidneys, liver, and brain can be damaged or fail to function eventually. The clotting factors are used up by the body in about 5-8 to eight days after the infection, after which no more clotting proteins are produced because the liver will have been infected by by the virus. The consequence of this appears that when the endothelial cells are damaged and break down due to severe inflammation. Endothelial cells are the cells of the inner lining of the blood vessels. When the liver stops producing clotting protein, the leakage of the blood vessels results in non-stop bleeding. Signs and Symptoms Ebola has an incubation period of about 2 to 21 days after exposure to the infection. The clear signs and symptoms of the Ebola virus disease start appearing about 8 to 10 days after the infection. The signs and symptoms Symptoms include fever that is normally higher than 38 degrees Celsius or about 104 degrees Fahrenheit, headache and confusion, joint and muscle pain, chest pain and shortness of breath, bruising without explanation, sore throat, blood appearing in the stool, coughing up blood, vomiting blood, bleeding into the whites of the eyes, lethargy, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and a maculopapular rash 
which is a flat red area with small bumps. Patients with the Ebola virus disease can recover, and recovery starts from about 7 to 14 days after the appearance of the first signs and symptoms. But the number of deaths from the disease is increasing day by day, which normally occurs between 6 to 16 days after the symptoms appear. Generally, the cause of death has been low blood pressure due to excessive fluid loss. Transmission The Ebola virus disease is contagious and can be transmitted from having direct contact with the infected person. The infection can be spread through the mouth, eyes, nose, abrasions, and open wounds and cuts using the mediums of transmission such as blood, body fluids such as saliva, urine, sweat, vomit, semen, feces, and breast milk, blood and body fluids of fruit bats or infected apes, needles, syringes, and gloves that have been contaminated with the virus. The Ebola virus does not spread through food, water, or air but healthcare workers dealing with infected patients are exposed to a higher risk of the infection as they are more likely to come in contact with the blood and body fluids of the infected patient, which is why health professionals must be provided with protective equipment and they should take all necessary precautionary measures. After recovery, the virus can still be transmitted from previous infected men through the semen till up to about seven weeks from recovery. The same applies to breast milk in women. However, the safe time for breastfeeding is still not yet confirmed. In case of death, the bodies remain contagious, which may put people dealing with deceased bodies at risk, so careful handling is required even after death. Diagnosis The early symptoms of the Ebola virus disease is similar to those of malaria, typhoid, and many other diseases, which makes it harder to diagnose the Ebola virus disease. In order to confirm the presence of the Ebola virus, the following tests can be used. An antigen captor detection test, antibody capture enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA test, an electron microscopy, virus isolated by cell culture, and serum neutralization test. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, the nurse must notify their supervisor and the hospital is required to notify the CDC. Treatment and prevention. There is no approved medication or treatment for the Ebola virus disease as of now. The healthcare provided is supportive in nature and includes symptomatic treatment, for instance, medicating individual symptoms such as fever, pain, and nausea, etc. Monitoring and maintaining blood pressure and oxygenation levels, and rehydration through oral and intravenous administration of IV fluids or blood products. The Ebola virus disease can be prevented by avoiding contact with the virus or contaminated surfaces. Precautions against the virus include keeping hands clean by using hand sanitizers containing at least 60% of alcohol or by washing hands frequently with water and soap. Avoiding contact with patients, especially their blood and body fluids. Avoiding traveling to affected areas such as Africa. Healthcare providers should use protective clothing, eye shields, masks, gloves, and follow the infection control procedures. Patients should be isolated from uninfected people, and needles and other equipment that have been contaminated should be disposed of properly. As deceased bodies remain infectious, only specific people with special training should handle them, taking precautionary measures. It is also important to isolate the infected persons from the rest in order to prevent the virus from spreading further. Scientists are researching to develop vaccines against the Ebola virus disease. However, they have not yet been tested and approved. Now, let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. After the video, be sure to look below in the description section because we have a bunch more questions available for you. Question number one. As the nurse assesses the possibility of a client being exposed to the Ebola virus disease, she asks the client if he has traveled to which of the following countries with widespread transmission. Select all that apply. A, Guinea, B, Spain, C, Sierra Leone, D, Nigeria, E, Liberia, and F, Senegal. Looking at the answer options, A, Guinea is located in West Africa and is a known place for outbreaks. B, Spain is not a known place for Ebola outbreaks, however, there was one or two instances involving healthcare workers. C, Sierra Leone is also located in West Africa and is also a known place of outbreaks. D, Nigeria, although is also located in West Africa, however, has been able to remain free from outbreaks. Answer E, Liberia, is also located in West Africa and again is where outbreaks are taking place and finally, answer F, Senegal, is also located in West Africa, however, has been able to remain free from outbreaks, making the final answers A, C, and E. These are countries where widespread transmission has been documented per the latest update on the CDC website. Question number two. 
As the nurse continuously monitors the client suspected of having contracted Ebola virus disease from recent travel to Sierra Leone, which of the following laboratory results needs immediate attention by the physician? A, a hematocrit of 45%, B, an AST of 30, C, a platelet count of 90,000, or D, a hemoglobin of 17. These answer options do contain laboratory values which need to be committed to memory. However, I will tell you that the more you see them and the more questions about them that you complete, the easier it gets. However, when you finish the video, do look below in the description section because I do have a tool to help you learn and organize major laboratory values. Going back to the answer options. Option A, a hematocrit of 45%. A normal hematocrit is between about 40 to 55%, depending on age and gender. Option B, an AST of 30%. Well, a normal value is about 10 to 30. So a level of 30 would be considered normal. Option D, a hemoglobin of 17. Well, a normal hemoglobin, depending on age and sex, ranges from about 12 to 17. So a level of 17 would be normal. However, answer C, a platelet count of 90,000, is low because a normal platelet count is between 150,000 to 450,000. So this value needs to be reported to the physician because it could be a sign of hematologic dysfunction. And finally, question number three. A symptomatic client with previous exposure to the Ebola virus disease has been tested positive for ELISA. The nurse expects which of the following treatment plans for the client? A. Surgical treatment. B. Antivirals. C. An albumin infusion. Or D. Supportive. For these question answers, A does not really make sense because what would the surgeon operate on? This is a systemic infection that seems to start in the bloodstream. Therefore, no surgical intervention would be necessary. Option B, antivirals, would maybe seem correct as this is a viral disease. However, as of yet, there are no approved medications. Hopefully, this will change soon. Option C, an albumin infusion. Well, an albumin infusion may be necessary. However, you cannot blindly say that every patient will need this as it will be done on a case-by-case -case basis. However, option D is the most correct as the CDC recommends that the current treatment is supportive. Therefore, symptoms are treated as they appear when it comes to the Ebola virus disease. This involves providing intravenous fluids to balance electrolytes, maintain oxygen levels and blood pressure, and treating other infections as they occur. All right, guys, I really hope that you did enjoy this video. Just a reminder to look below in the description section because we have more questions available for you. As a nurse, one of the best ways to understand the material is to put it in real life situations. And that's what NCLEX questions do. So we've created a bunch more NCLEX style questions for you, which I really hope that you find very helpful for you. So anyways, again, thank you so much for watching this video and all of my videos. And I cannot wait to hear from you guys again soon. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. I love you guys so much. Bye.